Hi, <laughs> my name is Svenja, I'm a product manager uh, here at Prisma. And today I want to talk with you about how to co-create products in, um, well, in a fully remote setup. I'm currently working on a very uh, big project for Prisma and also for the customer that we are actually working with. Um, it is still ongoing, this project, but still I want to share today three key learnings that we already gathered out of this deep, uh, close collaboration. So, first of all, how to set such a project up? You could think about the, this project as an intersection. Currently, in modern days, we have like mainly two different types of intersection. The one is signal controlled. A signal controlled intersection works in the following way. A car approach, a car stops at the red light, uh, cars are queuing, nothing moves until some logic tells you to go ahead and gives you the green light. So you continue. If you think that um, into a project, this would mean a customer arrives at the intersection, delivers a need, um, formulates a need, tells you a problem, the, the, the service provider is doing something with it, the customer is waiting, the requests are queuing, and at some point, somebody gives a green light and you can go ahead. So it's very slow. Another option would be a roundabout. When you think about a roundabout, uh, cars approaching, um, it is checking, is, is there um, capacity, can I enter the roundabout? As soon as there is some free space, you can, you can go and you leave the roundabout at the position where you want to leave it again. So uh, there's a constant flow within the roundabout not this stop and go. And you don't have an external logic that is actually telling you when to go. So you're fully there with your full attention. When you turn this now into a project, it gives another picture. It would mean a customer delivers a request or a problem. It is taken as soon as there is capacity and it goes into the flow as soon as it can enter, exit the roundabout again. So that is exactly what we wanted to do with this project. And we told ourselves we want to build the best roundabout that we've ever built. To do so, we had a couple of techniques that we applied. So first of all, we built very, very uh, small increments out of the big picture, picture uh, feature, out of the big feature. So we cut everything down and the small increments we showed to our customer. So every small step was approved uh, by the customer. And this small increment then was handed over to the developer. So customer and developer were looking at the same thing. Um, then every week we actually sat together, we aligned on topics that were going on, on questions that arose, and we worked very closely together. So everybody was always on, on, the page, on the same page, like what is going on in this week. Besides these weekly meetings, we also had bi-weekly presentations where actually our developers showed every two weeks what had been developed. So our customer could actually have direct, um, direct view onto things that were just developed. Um, and after this, presentation every two weeks, we handed it over to uh, the customer itself. So we deployed it on our test system and the, test, the customer could directly get comfortable with the functionality, test it and um, well, find things that maybe weren't uh, perfect yet or that worked out well and give us also the, the check on, okay, this is how we can go. From both sides, we heard that this was super beneficial in the collaboration because, well, once from customer side, it was very handy that actually something that had just been discussed is there already two weeks after. So you have real, you could really feel the influence that you would have in the development. And from development side, just last week I spoke with uh, one of our developers and he said, well, Svenja, you know, it is really the, the most motivating thing that we can have uh, while developing when we know just 
after we pushed it to our environment, it can be tested by the customer and he can tell us um, if this is what he needed or not. And that leads to the second point, the second learning that I want to share, which is the transparency and honesty. I mean, transparency and honesty is not a new thing. It's something well, that is there for quite a long time, but still it doesn't get old. And especially now, uh, during these times, during Corona times, it is something that got even much more important. Um, communication was tricky, let's say, because we couldn't sit on one table and exchange on things, but we had to come up with other, with other methodologies and with other tricks. The one thing is the frequency that you communicate and that you exchange. Uh, I already mentioned the meetings that we have, like every week we are up to date, but also the, um, yeah, the transparency that you actually give on things. And that was a big learning for us in this uh, project once again, that it is okay to also embrace mistakes. So within our weekly meetings, we didn't only talk about things that went well, well, successes, but also we said, okay, we found this situation which hinders us in proceeding or we found this bug or we found this mistake. And well, by just making it transparent and being honest about also maybe not all the, the happy things in the project, we created even a deeper connection within the team. And then the third, learning that I have, my third point that I have, um, is the beauty of asking questions or also to dare actually asking questions. Because obviously we had a planning at the beginning of the project, we made a sketch like uh, this is how it should look like, this is how all the features should look like, but throughout the project we learned how important it actually is to um, dare to reevaluate decisions that had been made. We had a lot of times where we already had, for example, a design in place, uh, um, a flow that should look in a, like a specific uh, way. And when we were at the point where we would start the development, we took a look at it again and said, okay, is that actually with the knowledge that we have now, a couple of months later, is that actually still what we need? So we dared to ask why were we doing this? Why are we doing this? And also dared to actually re-evaluate the decisions that we took some time ago. And these are my three key takeaways. Build roundabouts, <laughs> um, communicate transparent, transparent and honest, and be flexible in the decisions that you might have made some time ago. This is something I definitely want to take into the next projects that we will tackle uh, on how to collaborate with our customers on how to co-create products uh, in the future on Prisma. Thank you.